Brody and I are up near the Beaver Mountain area servicing some game cameras. Bigfoot sighting hotspot. This general area here and uh, 10 mile surrounding area, there's been like six Bigfoot sightings in the last three years. The last one just about a month ago. We find Bigfoot tracks here all the time. And look at some of these rock formations. Oh, I just heard a wood crack. I don't know if it was too far away for the camera to pick up, but look at the kind of shelter areas. I don't necessarily think Bigfoot's a caveman, but I'll bet you it would crawl into something like that if the weather was bad, if it was pouring rain. To me, it's more than likely a bear or a mountain lion spot, but Bigfoot has been spotted on this mountain that the camera's facing now. Two of them, two of them come down on a guy and his two dogs that was tent camping while they was cooking some steaks. So we're gonna head back, service those cameras, and of course, if there's anything cool at all, we'll let you guys take a look at them. Always hoping for the home run. It's also nice to see the types of animals that live in a place that people consistently see Bigfoot. Interesting rock walls and stuff back in there. Some good remote places to camp back here. There's a snap off right by this camp. Oh, something stepped right here and smushed this down just recently. Huh. I don't know if that's the weather or if a squatch is in here marking his territory. That's about 12 feet up there. Twisted at the top. That's what I was thinking. That's why I was kind of taking it seriously. Let me get back by you so I can see it. Snow load would, you know, it doesn't, it just seems odd that it's twisted. Yeah, these aspens don't have the leaves and the branches to catch the wind to get it to twist like that. That's interesting. There's an animal trail right here. And it is on a mountain where the Bigfoot's been spotted twice on this particular mountain. <clears throat> and then about a month ago, not even a mile from here, another Bigfoot spotted. It looks like something's been laying down right here too. Look at all the smashed down vegetation, folks. Should we head up there? Sure. Let's check around up there. Let's go where the ridge walkers go. Native Americans often referred to them as ridge walkers. They seem to travel the ridge lines. However, they have to come down into the valley for certain resources, but that's one way to avoid people. People pretty much stay down in the valleys. That's where the rivers and the roads and trails are. Oregon grapes. There's some food right here on this mountain. If there's one Oregon grape plant, there's gonna be more. Oh, look, there goes an owl. He was just sitting there watching us. Big. Yeah. Did you get him? I'm pretty sure the camera got him for a brief second as he flew away. He was so silent. I didn't hear his wings flap one time. Yeah, look at that. That's twisted underneath. Yep. Snapped there. Look, something stepped on this plant recently too. Careful. Yeah. <laughs> I always worry about rolling on a rock or a, a stick. Twisted an ankle or a knee. Wow. Up on these cliffs is such a great vantage point. That's a warning cry. I don't know if it's for us or something else. Oh, 
Hopefully we're pushing a squatch ahead of us. We're gonna go through this little rock pass. Brody's following an animal trail and you can see where stuff is just smashed down going up through this. There's a ton of snapped off sticks here too. Wood knockers. Or does it look like crap? Not a great footing in there. That might be the path of least resistance from that. Well, all right, let's go that way there. Let me know when you see the camera. Because of their color, they hide pretty well. It's a pretty neat area. Look at all the rock formations. And you can tell that something, animals, Use this area a lot. This animal trail that Brody's following is well blazed. And this is not a trailhead. This is an animal trail. I'm gonna poke around, see if we can find some caves. Do you wanna walk around? Uh... Yeah, let's check out this rock formation. That's cool. Hoping we can find a cave. I can't believe all the rocks up here. There's one over there. This was, this one's gigantic. Oh look, there is. There's a cave right back in there. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's nothing in it. Of course, if there was anything in there, heard us coming up from a mile away. Actually, right past that thing's the best. Look at that devastation right through there. Animals come through here all the time. Mm -hmm. Looks like that used to be a well-used trail and then now that tree's laying across it and blocking it. Yeah, you can see that every once in a while something with hoofs when it's jumping kicks or hits that log. That's pretty cool. There. That is a big shelter. If I was in a survival situation, I would probably use that for a night. Look around for Bigfoot tracks. I mean, that's big enough. A Squatch could crawl in there for the night too. That is cool. More rock formations up here. What a crazy area. Okay, mind you, this is the same mountain that a guy watched two of them come down off of and surround his camp. And that's just the two he saw. You know, maybe they had a, a family unit up here. They're like, God, those steaks smell good. That one got twisted at the base. I heard it off that direction. Something stepped on it. Listen for a second. Something big is walking on. I'm gonna slip around this rock. There's a big animal or creature over here, you guys.
this camera watches this nice bedding spot that's protected by boulders. my opinion camera is hidden very well in a good spot that appears animals like to use it's amazing that all these boulders are up here and there's nothing above them to drop them must have been during the last ice age like something bust through here. Just rock formations everywhere. When I'm on these things at a Bigfoot sighting hotspot, hiking around, I always wonder if one's just sitting there curiously watching me from a good vantage point. There are not a lot of people hiking here. Well, a lot of elk and deer hunters, they think about, you know, if I harvest one of them, am I gonna be able to drag it out of here? That seems like a rough spot to have to drag something out. This is a pretty neat spot. I really thought it was just gonna be the top and then you'd be going right back down into another valley. So there is a, like it's like a plateau with a forest and a bunch of rock formations up here. Yeah, I kind of wanted to search around the area above where you guys were camping. Oh, yeah, you're heading that way. Just so that we could you know, see if there's any recent stuff going on around. I smell bug spray. Did you spray down? Nope. Huh, I wonder what I'm smelling then. It's not you. I didn't bug spray. Huh. Must be a natural type bug repellent. Smells like bug repellent. Don't know what it is. <laughs> Smelt like deep woods off. <laughs> That's what I was, thought I was smelling. Do you think we're parallel with that camp yet? Go over and look. Mm -hmm. Sure. Wow, there's an animal trail that goes down there too. I heard something moving down there. Might have pushed a deer out. I think we overshot the camp spot, but that's cool. I think we're below it. Yeah, I can see the main canyon there. I'm fine with wherever you would like to go. Yeah, I just wanted to see if we can't see some uh, new prints. Or... Yeah, there's definitely something that we pushed ahead of us that's moving down there. I heard it again. I see a lot of different kind of hoofed animals trapped. Lots of evidence of deer. There's some bear scat.
Something busts through here a lot. I wonder if all these busted up sticks is uh, to keep something up off of the ground when it gets wet, like a Bigfoot nest. I mean, I don't know any other animal besides a gorilla that makes a nest on the ground like this. I am smelling that weird smell again that I first thought was bug repellent. I'm smelling it right from this spot. But it, it doesn't smell like bug repellent anymore. It's similar though. I think something beds down here a lot and I'm smelling it. Nothing, nothing but definitive enough to measure. Flat impressions, but nothing that <clears throat> leaves an outline. But this is hard. Well, that bedding spot is big enough for a couple of Shaquille O'Neal's to lay down. It's a pretty good blaze trail, though, if you can see it. Yeah, I see it. I think this takes us right up over the camp spot. Can you imagine anything you want to drop down in there? This looks like, this animal trail you pointed out looks like the best option. Yeah, I think this all here is blocked off. Uh-huh. Oh. All right, I remember seeing these rock formations from down below. This looks precarious. Without Russell Accord repelling ropes and helmet that I always keep in my backpack. You know, you just never know if you're going to have to get hair out of a bird nest in a plastic vial off the mountain real quick because the storm's rolling in. Just never know. Yeah, you can tell this boulder was sat on top of some smaller, smaller rocks at one time. Definitely from the last ice age. Wow. Bet you that weighs more than a semi load of cars. Look, something barrels its way through here. Mm. Yeah. I'll tell you what, those squatches come down off the mountain directly in front of us over that camp. And it was uh, at dusk. They know what they're doing. They have a lot better ability than me because I don't want to climb down that in the daytime. Maybe this is a better way down. I'm not sure. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, they very well could have come down this way. I am thinking though, the way people see them scale mountains, they come down any way they like, just like a deer or an elk. I actually think this is dropping us right down on the camp. Probably the best way down. This is a good place to just kind of hold up and look around and peek around. Around the, those grove of trees right there. And then standing on the other side of that boulder. Here's a good shelter spot. Sure, Shaquille O'Neal would have no problem crawling up under that. Like Brody, six feet tall, he's coming around this rock outcropping. Bet you a couple of big squatches could spoon under there, stay warm and dry. Look at that well-blazed trail right in front of us. Something busts through these trees all the time. I'm looking for Bigfoot-style tracks. You can see uh, this path goes up and around right here too. This whole ledge constantly gets used. Everything is smashed down here. So we have a couple of options. I'm gonna go this way.
that flat-footed human to Bigfoot shape right there. Ooh, the Alex took off. You see it? I saw it shadows. Oh, man, it had like a... Almost a four-foot wingspan. It was large. I was all checking out this track right here. It's not definitive enough to sit and measure, but it's human to Bigfoot shape. Yeah, I wouldn't have seen that thing's shadow flying off if you hadn't have said anything. I looked up just in time to see its shadow. It's just pushed right up on the wing. Something lays down right here quite often. Stomps down the ground. Nice spot if you like laying in the dirt. Whoa. And it's flat on the mountainside. What's that all about? I don't know. That's strange looking. It's all matted down. And this tree has been twisted around this tree. This looks to me like something stands there a whole lot. Just just waits. Yeah, this has been pounded down with hundreds and hundreds of times of use. Another animal trail off that way. Animal trail that way. I wonder if this is a good ambush spot. But they just like to peep on the campers right down below from here. Feel safe up this far. I don't know, that spot right there gets used a lot. Something has laid there, stood there, stomped that down. I had two more game cameras to set up up here and I already set them up. That'd be a great place to set one to see what actually uses that. If they don't detect it. Well, unless you want to get some more area covered up here. I. It doesn't matter to me, we got uh, one camera down in the valley near that camp it needs to be serviced. We can head that back down. <clears throat> All right, which way? I'll let you lead. A lot of loose dirt in here. Yeah, we're walking over a squirrel cache. It's like a squirrel uses this area every year. <laughs> Maybe something uh, eats at this squirrel cache and then takes a nap up there. <laughs> I did not know this until I started using game cameras year round. In the winter time, rabbits will eat the the squirrel pine cones. They eat the pine cone and all. Yeah, those snowshoe rabbits. Those poor squirrels, they work their they work their butts off all summer and fall, and then everybody eats their food. <laughs> Yeah, if the bears, the badgers, the rabbits are digging into those caches, why wouldn't the squatch? Especially when food's scarce. What hissed and growled that you could be eating? Yep. <clears throat> Sitting in that loose soil. Right, I'm glad Brody and I hiked on top of the mountain behind the camp. You know, you always uh, think you know what something's going to look like by circling it on the ground. I just thought it would come to a peak and then go right down to a valley on the other side. And there's a large flat plateau area up there with all kinds of forest habitat, rock formations, cover. And it looks like a lot of animals use the area. Yeah, you step on a rock that rolls. Don't matter how sure-footed you are, you're going where the rock takes you, man. <laughs> Okay, this is taking us over the camp area. Yeah, I see our vehicle right down. down there. Yeah, we can just drop down if you'd like. Is this the area that you came up to uh, find that footprint up here? The, the footprints, area? the footprints were within 50 feet of camp, oh, believe it or not. Below, a little bit further. Mm -hmm. We actually, um, whatever made those uh, vocalizations at us, 
was completely silent. We did not hear it move for about five minutes later. And then when we heard it move, it was actually at ground level, like 30 feet from us, when it accidentally stepped on something that snapped. So it was very quiet. Yeah. Um... And over where, uh, I heard something snap is where I measured one of the Bigfoot tracks. We're actually uh, coming right down to where uh, I measured the tracks. I wouldn't want to walk through this at night. There's a lot of loose rock right here. Yeah, and to be silent. Hmm. Even walking on these rocks, they're kind of clickety clackety. Yeah, I want to show you guys what right here. we're walking. Walk down this way. There's an animal trail right here. See, this stuff doesn't give much opportunity for footprints, but it's hard to silently walk on it. And Brody found a really good animal trail. I decided to service this camera last that's down in the valley near the camp area just in case we spook something like Squatch past it, away from us. Then we got that one last opportunity to catch one because it makes a mistake because it's trying to get away from us. Yeah, yeah, this is it. See this weird log thingy? Yeah, I measured, uh, I saw one track a little higher up in the mountain back there, and then there was one somewhere in this area where I measured one, and this is where we heard it snap. Actually, you're closer to it. We heard something snap in this thick stuff about five minutes after the vocalization. Yeah, we're actually standing. The track's now gone, but uh, Brody and I are standing where I measured a track the following morning. Look, something smashed this down. I'm sure something just stepped on it. But yeah, it was completely silent. It somehow vocalized twice up the mountain from us and silently worked its way down to here. And that's when we finally heard it snap. Yeah, something's been smashing down the vegetation. Doesn't necessarily mean it's Bigfoot smashing all this down. It's just a spot where Bigfoot has been seen in the past. Lots of badger activity here. Brand new. Mm-hmm. Yep. Bite your face off. All right, I'm going to take you to that last camera. Oh, I heard some snap-offs back that direction. I don't know if this microphone's powerful enough to pick that up, but it was running. Yeah. Okay, when we, when we started tracking those Bigfoot tracks from the river back in here, we found some fresh snap-offs. Here's one of them. Don't know if it's a territorial marker or what, but there's one of them that was pretty fresh when we found it. And it's a good seven, eight feet up there. This other one over here is pretty impressive. And this one has fallen apart since we found it last. We tracked the Bigfoot tracks actually to this one and they changed directions at this snap-off. Yeah, there's the top of it. It finally come apart, but when we first found it, when it was fresh, it was still hanging on up there. And this is where the tracks changed direction. And that's what motivated me to put a game camera in this area. There's the camera. I hope you guys enjoyed a look around a Bigfoot sighting location, Bigfoot sighting hotspot, 
we'll show you anything that's on those cameras at the end of this video. Keep on watching. We're going to keep on squatching.